So this is what reselling is all about. It's acquiring goods, merchandise, items to resell. That's the whole point of this. Hey, Don here. Why don't we today talk about what reselling really is? Because it's only one real thing you're doing. You're buying something and reselling something. You just have to be able to find that something, which is the hardest part for many people out there, or at least some things that are worth good money, worth your time to invest in it. Obviously, the bigger the ROI, the more return on your investment that you get off of whatever you're buying, the better off you will always be. Your costs will be less if your ROI is higher. The cost may not even matter at some point if you've got huge ROIs on the item that you are going to be selling. Now, I'm going to show you in just a minute here, just a couple days, three individual pickups of items that we purchased, all within three single stops, just to give you an idea. And I have 65 bucks or so into what I'm going to show you here. Now, we source the same types of things. I love vintage toys. I love collectibles, paper of any kind, anything that's paper, photos, uh, magazines, books. I love comics. I love early toys, of course, action figures, board games, puzzles, um, you name it, militaria, buttons, uniform items, militaria, transportation of any types, airplane items, ocean liners, all that kind of stuff sells for some phenomenal money. I don't mess with um, high-end electronics. I do mess with tons of musical media. I do a ton of records, sheet music. Um, records are one of my specialties, I would say, but anything like that I mess with. But it's the items I'm going to show you in just a minute here that give me by far some of the best ROI that we get day in and day out. It's always almost nothing invested into it. I can buy a big mass bulk quantity of these. And again, I've mentioned sourcing all over the place and tons of videos and places where I get a lot of this sort of thing at. Um, but this is where the bread and butter is. This is what keeps our store running. It's items like this or items in different categories that have similar sourcing options for us. Figure out what works for you, what works for you, and go from there. That's all we did. We got rid of the stuff we didn't like or wasn't our thing like clothing and stuff. And I don't mess with sports or... Um, I don't mess with pottery very much unless it's a quick move in and out because I don't want to have the risk of damaging something. But let's look at some things that we just picked up. So right here is three different stops, three different purchases from three different places. It's all been sorted, kind of. They're individually put in here in specifics that go together, whether they're from a series, whether they're the same type of material. They're basically bagged up in here in the order we're going to scan them, photo them, or whatever the case may be. They will also be listed in that very same order. Now, there's all sorts of different types of things in here. Let's see what we got. Um, there's paper dolls. There's Victorian advertising, like this fabulous piece here. And this is like a little folder. This is like a 40 to maybe 65 or so bucks sale price. That's probably what this will go for, or more. This is a fairly scarce one. I've got some uh, cigarette wrappers. This is from a box of cigarettes. In fact, there's two different ones in here. Not in the greatest condition, but these will still probably get me $100 each. Now, this is but a few bucks, in all honesty. There's probably around 65 bucks into everything you see here. Again, this is from three different stops, three different pickups. So this is a great example of just a couple days' worth of purchases and just paper. Now, we get other things. I've gotten toys, jewelry, books, uh, comic books. I've got some animation items, tons of postcards, mind you. Uh, some really nice, fabulous vintage metal items, some little tiny figurines and things along that line we've just picked up. So this is what I want to see. This is the quantity. This is our bread and butter. This is a mass amount of individual items that I can list. There's probably, geez, 
four, five, six hundred items in this bin right here. But that's not actually everything. I did acquire this just recently. This is some pretty nice stuff. It may not look like it to the average person if you don't know everything, but there's some really nice early cards in here. There's uh, menus from, um, I think this is a menu in here, from the Riverside Inn. There's a lot of historical and advertising pieces in here. Um, there's some, geez, here's another musical uh, brochure. This has a real photo. These are photos, actual unmounted images. This is just a superb lot of stuff in here. I may show some of this in a Patreon video, but just this little packet here, there's some CDVs, some very nice business cards, some brochures, some handouts, Christmas, there's a couple train tickets. There's probably $300 in this little tiny bag right here. Again, this is what it's all about. I source down the same things because we make the most ROI off of these junk paper items. Everybody thinks the same thing, that it's not really worth a bunch of money. Here's a nice, I believe this is a uh, cover off of something, but I could be wrong. It could just be what you see here, a Christmas card, foreign language one, but it's fabulous artwork here. Whenever I see candles in a Christmas tree, those almost always do extremely well. It dates it to prior to 1920s, prior to electrification of lights for Christmas trees. Another interesting item, and this is a very large faux bill. This is like a Christmas card to some extent, uh, or seasonal card. You'd send these out for various different reasons. It's the bank of good cheer. It's just like a novelty item. Now these are collected by many people who collect money. This is basically like a Cinderella bill of some sorts. There's a whole category of these faux ones. Some of them are coupons, some of them are reproductions, some of them are made to look like bills but are not. Interesting graduation uh, card here with actual real images of the people. Tons of menus and brochures in here. Um, let's get down to some of the better stuff in here. Some nice real photos. Some uh, Here's a real nice image here, actually. Many of these are advertised or uh, marked on the back as to what they are. There's some nice menus. Menus, I usually do 30 to, say, 50 bucks for these types. More menus. In fact, let me just zip down to the bottom. Some early photos in here. Lots of early cards, but the best part are postcards. There's some real early postcards of types that I have not run into before. And I've seen just millions of postcards, no exaggeration. Some of these are really early, really nice. Most of them are identified with who's on them, who's in them, where it's at. Some of these are college images of dorms, some real nice outside images, RPPCs. Uh, just some fabulous early postcards. It's these sorts of finds that really make us a ton of money. The ROI on stuff like this is just horrendous. I have almost nothing into these sorts of cards. I know I've got some good money here. I've looked up some of them. A large chunk of these are going to be worth at least 20, 25 bucks a piece. Some of them will be worth even more than that. There's a couple in here and that have actual history of selling in the $100 range. So I should do extremely well. Inside views of places that don't exist anymore are great. And this is an RPPC as well. Christmas cards. It's just a very nice assortment of these types of things. You gotta be able to get it though. If you can't source the items, there's no real way to sell them. So this is the type of item that we hunt down and makes us the biggest ROI in our entire business and always has been that way. Now, buttons may be another area that we make a huge amount of ROI other than just paper in general. But with buttons, we have a ton of time invested into learning and the, the books and guides. Same with postcards. We spent thousands of hours dealing with postcards, looking them up, researching them acquiring them, sorting them, listing them. So when you've done that a lot in specific categories, you'll obviously be better off than other people just entering into the categories. The more you do something like this, deal with 
a big nice stack of good postcards, really good postcards, or menus, or photos, or labels, or stickers, or letters, or, or stamps. Um, luggage labels, whatever you're selling, whatever type of paper or whatever type of any, anything you're selling, the more you know about it, the better you're always going to do. It's an investment though. If you're willing to invest the time into stuff like this, you're going to have a good payoff at the end of the day. You'll be able to do fabulous. You'll get the idea on where the places are to find these where other people aren't looking. I've said many other sourcing places for these types of things. Now we find a decent amount of postcards at places no one would ever think postcards would be found. We're thinking outside the box and looking at other avenues, other reasons why postcards might show up at places you wouldn't think so. Flea markets are always good, auctions are always good, but there's many other places way outside of that range that do extremely well for us with finding these sorts of things. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Country corn flakes, new country 